It's Saturday in Soshangubi, and today, like every Saturday, hundreds of broken-hearted family members and friends will be walking to the cemetery where they will be burying loved ones. Many are children and babies. After standing in the hot sun for hours, the families will make their long journey back to their metal shacks where they will grieve and pick up the pieces of their hearts one more time. Teenagers expected to fill the role of parent will now head many of the homes. Others will be led by frightened grannies desperately crying out to God for help to feed, educate, and care for the little ones left behind. They plead for good health that will endure until the children are grown. Almost everyone is thinking about the high cost of the funeral that has plunged them even deeper into poverty. The children now carry a new label, orphan, a term that becomes an identity of being different from their peers, poor, and an easier target for abusers. The challenges of grief and schoolwork seem too much to bear. But because of people like you working with Kiris, Kiris House of Encouragement is known as the place in the community that will help. It's the place where orphans have a new identity. We call them family. These fragile children come after school where they can experience emotional and physical safety. They can begin to heal inside walls of hugs, laughter, and caring adults. Many will receive their only nutritious meal of the day, and there is always someone to help with homework. Through Kiris's It Takes Courage program, they learn about character and they begin an exciting and courageous path to finding a vision for their lives and being all that God created them to be. Together, they learn that Jesus loves them and that they have great value and a purpose for their lives. Nelson Mandela once said, A good head and a good heart are always a formidable combination. May our heads and our hearts continue to courageously care for these precious children and their families. kids at one orphan care project that we're involved in. And it breaks our heart to think about what AIDS, the result of AIDS, is still doing around the world. Fifteen years ago, Jenny and I were both sitting in uh, offices in academia. My background is public health education, Jenny's is education, and cross-cultural communication. And the Lord put us together um, in order to help large Christian ministries think through what to do about the AIDS epidemic. So we worked with organizations like Crew, Samaritan's Purse, World Vision, Willow Creek, helping them think through the best educational, medical, and theologically sound approach to HIV and AIDS. Nelson Mandela's quote about a good head and a good heart are critical to this whole issue. We can have a big heart, but we have to think with our minds and think about what's going to bring about long-term success. And that has everything to do with the hearts and minds of the leaders who are making decisions on behalf of these children. What they think, what they believe, and what they do affects not only our kids, but millions of kids. Go, into any, go onto any school campus in South Africa, 7% of the entire student body is an orphan. 
So how, are, how can you help? Why are we here today? We're interested in three things with the Barnabas Group. We've already been working behind the scenes with Ron Henry, Connie Scalios, Jim West, thinking through what God has as the next steps for our ministry. And specifically, we have three things on our heart today. Number one, we have educational materials and training programs that we need to have evaluated and leveraged more effectively in the marketplace. We need to start thinking about the accelerating pace of web communications and mobile communications. Maybe you have some expertise that you could help us with that. And lastly, we need to connect with some business entities in South Africa. And so if you have connections um, that take us to the continent of Africa and you can open some doors for us, that would be ideal. We're working together with Barnabas Group to take and leverage everything that we've done into a whole new world. Kyrus is a Greek word, and it means to do something with all your heart and passion. Fifteen years ago, I was in the comfort of teaching at Azusa Pacific University. Marsha was in the comfort of James Madison University as a tenured professor. And we were brought together by crew to help them to address this issue in over 53 nations. And as Marcia mentioned, we've partnered with many organizations. It wasn't until I walked into my first African country and held my first child that was dying of AIDS. And it was at that moment I knew that my life was for such a time as this. It took a lot of passion and a lot of heart for me to walk out of the comfort of that university position and to go into the world single, and we're both still single, just to mention it in case you don't know, anyway. <laughs> um, and, um, <laughs> and to walk into a world that looked like this, this blurry picture where pastors spend their weekends burying people in their congregation. Every Saturday, we can't do anything across Africa because of the death and dying that happens on a daily basis. Our hearts were broken. And as Marcia mentioned, Nelson Mandela's quote, the pastors, the educators all over the world that we would encounter, their heart was to seek God and give the gospel to people and to change lives. But they didn't have the skills. And so what we do with Kiris is we come in and as you can see, this is a cow. I don't know if you can see it, but now I'm going to outline it. The cow is, a, is this is like the blurry picture of a cow. And when we, when we come into a community and it is so ravaged by a blurry picture, we start bringing in lines of definition. We have an It Takes Courage program that starts to help people to see clearly how to walk into a classroom and help young people to say no to sex and yes to relationships. To help young people to be able to make a difference and, and, and make their life count. To be able to um, talk with children and not at children. And after this, these, our mentorship program and our It Takes Courage program, the cow comes into, into a very clear picture. And the blurry picture is no longer blurry because we've brought lines of definition, and it has been such an awesome privilege. We've reached over 35,000 leaders in 53 nations. Now you know why we're single. And you can see when the lines go away, and when we go away, the picture is still clear. You can still see the cow, can't you? Because of those lines of definition. Our It Takes Pro Courage program is a life skills program that we always focus on the leaders in community. The leaders that work with youth the most, which is the faith community workers, pastors, and educators. They are our focus group. And we have seen where between our, our It Takes Courage program as well as our church-based um, oral drama, Grandma's Village, kind of the Walton's Gone Africa, um, these products are not just products. 
but it is a life-changing movement. In fact, one example is of a pastor. His name is Tondo. He left after being trained with our It Takes Courage program, and he walked into a cl his youth group, and he shared about all of the concepts and taught the curriculum. Tondo came back to us and he said, you know what, Jenny and Marsha, I've got to tell you, I am committed to this program. Not only has my youth group doubled in size, but one young man walked up to me. And as he walked up to me, Tulani came up and said, today is the day that I am going to kill my father. He's abused my mother, he's abused my family long enough. And he said, and Tondo said, he took the gun out of his shirt and said, this is the gun I was going to use. And this was the last service I was going to come to, but you just taught about forgiveness. And that's a very important part of our 15 character traits that we teach in this curriculum program. And after learning about this, this lesson on forgiveness, Pastor Tondo, will you go with me to my dad and help me forgive my dad? That young boy is now a contributing member in Tondo's church, and so is his family. And Tondo is now a senior pastor, and he is holding youth rallies. It takes courage youth rallies all over South Africa, 1,500 to 3,000 youth coming together on a weekend. <clears throat> and we are so excited because the message is being caught and then taught. Tondo is just one example. He's now walked into the Ministry of Education in many areas in South Africa where now we have been invited to come in and actually do the It Takes Courage curriculum in the public school system across South Africa. We're all over Africa already, but to infiltrate into the schools in Africa, South Africa has been a real blessing. Tondo is just one of 35,000 leaders that we've poured into, and we are so blessed. The curriculum is a tool in the hands of the right leader who already has a clear understanding of what they're trying to accomplish. So we have a curriculum. That's great. What's greater is we're shaping the hearts and minds of leaders in Ministry of Health, Ministry of Education, and helping them see what Jesus sees, which is to advocate and make good decisions on behalf of these children. So we're here today asking for some technical expertise. We're public health and education people. We're not business people. And so we need some real business minds to rally around us. And you can talk with, with Connie. You can talk with Ron. Um, we're very interested in what you might have to say about the next steps for where God's taking us. If you help, no doubt whatsoever, we can get to 15,000 people in three provinces of South Africa alone, a million kids involved in social media, and connecting everybody in online training in educational things. Thanks. Let's thank them. A couple of things. Um, I love, and you know, everybody says, oh, yeah, prayer is important to us. But I, I love how they have these prayer cards. I encourage you to get those at their table over there. They tell you how to pray specifically for some of their programs. And also they have an event coming up on November 16th. So there's an envelope over there with invitation to it. So I encourage you to, to look at that. My bride's favorite country of the 50 she's been to is South Africa. So she's resonating with uh, what you're talking about here. Let me pray for this group, please. Also, page 39 is what you're going to be doing. You know the drill for that. Father God, we love you. And uh, we know that these kids are, are scarred. And sometimes a, a scar can be a reminder of the wound. Sometimes it can be a reminder of the healing. And you're a God of healing. So we pray over that. It takes courage. Lord, thank you for the courage of these two, of their team, of the kids that they serve over there, Lord. And, of course, we need to pray for husbands, Lord. So uh, we know that you're out there preparing the right men uh, for these ladies of God. And we just love you and thank you for what, what they're doing and who they are. In Jesus' name, amen.